Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to talk about the new Praetor Command Warbird Battlecruiser. This is a brand new ship that Cryptic has just announced on the latest 10 Forward stream last night. We don't have a dev blog out for it yet, so we do not yet know when exactly it is going to be released into the game, but I would expect it to be out either this Thursday or next Thursday. This ship is going to be going directly to the Infinity Lockbox, so for those of you that are not fans of lockbox ships, this is going to sadly be another one for you to ignore. Now for the ship itself, it is a Romulan ship and it does look a little bit funky. If you want to go look at it from a few other angles, I'll include a link to the 10 forward weekly uh, video here so you can go and take a look at it. They look at it from a few different angles here and some of you may be into it, some of you may not. The, the front of the ship is this part that you see at the left in the current image. So this is the front of the ship and then it's got its wings, which, you know, the, the bird like style of the ship here is quite Romulan with some of the Romulan designs. So this ship originates from the season finale of season one of Strange New Worlds. Specifically, it was the ship that the Praetor was in when the Romulan fleet warped in in that episode. So that is where the ship originates from, and it looks like it is quite close to the, the model that was shown in that episode. Now, for the stats of the ship itself, it is a 5-3 weapons layout. So, uh, for many of you, I know 5-3 is generally preferred. It is a Romulan Warbird, though, so it does have a Singularity Core instead of a Warp Core, so you are going to have lower power levels, and you're going to have Singularity Commands rather than Cruiser Commands. You have four devices, four engineering consoles, three science consoles, and four attack consoles. Now, where things get a bit confusing is with the bridge officer set up here. And we have a commander engineer with command, a lieutenant universal with miracle worker, a lieutenant commander tack, a lieutenant commander universal, and an ensign science. And what's really confusing here is the fact that this is literally a copy paste of a ship that we got in early 2021. That ship being the legendary Vorcha. And it's not just a copy and paste on the bridge officer setup. In fact, if we look at these two ships side by side, now we don't know the, the defense or mobility stats, so those may be different. But if we look at this, the bridge officers between the Praetor and the legendary Vorcha are the exact same. It's a direct copy and paste. We look at the weapon setup. It is a direct copy and paste. And if we look at the console setup, it is, uh, once again, a direct copy and paste. Now, some of you may say, well, the Praetor's got a battle cloak because it's Romulan. That's true. But guess what? The legendary Vorcha also has a battle cloak. And the legendary Vorcha is going to have a standard warp core, and it's going to have access to cruiser commands. So between these two ships, the legendary Vorcha is going to be a better platform for most people, especially if you're running an energy weapon setup on a ship like this. The Vorcha is going to be the better ship because you're going to have access to cruiser commands like the, the weapon one or the engine one. The Praetor is still a very capable ship, but you're going to be spending a lot more for it than you would for the legendary Vorcha. Now, the Legendary Vorcha is expensive also. It's locked to this 11th anniversary bundle, which is fairly expensive. But as many of you know, these lockbox ships are equally as expensive and they're unlocked on a single character. So for those of you that are interested in the ship, it's a good ship. You know, there's no doubt about that. The Legendary Vorcha is a very good ship itself. And this Praetor is a direct copy and paste, so it'll be able to do every last thing that the Vorcha was able to do. Now, I expect the Praetor to be a very good torpedo platform, and that's definitely what they seem to have built it around. And we know it's going to be strong because the Vorcha was one of the top torpedo platforms for quite a long time. And it just, you know, I, I've talked about this recently about with some of the ship designs, some of the traits, some of the consoles, it feels like they were starting to run out of ideas. And like, I just, I don't think I've ever seen a direct copy and paste like this between two ships. It just, it's not a very original design. 
you know, it's just, like I said, it's direct to copy and paste. The difference is they've slapped a Romulan skin on it, gave it a singularity core, and they've given it the Romulan battle cloak instead of the normal battle cloak. So for the ship itself, it'll be a very good ship. But if you're spending that type of money on the game, you may as well go out and just get the 11th anniversary bundle and get basically the same ship on account unlock. And in addition, with the 11th anniversary bundle, you are also going to get three other ships that are all good in different ways alongside a bunch of other nice things like some T6 coupons, low B, and so on. So I'll include links to the Vorcha and the 11th bundle down in the description below, and I'll include a link to the sheet where you can take a look at the comparison between the, the two ships. But it just it's crazy to me that they're copy pasting you know, the, the designs of ships now just I, I want to see more diversity in the types of ships we're getting. And, you know, I talked about the the Seneca trait being a direct copy and paste, basically, from the support carriers two years before. And now that was that was not exactly identical, but it was very close to what the prior version was. And now just a couple weeks later, we have a lockbox ship coming out. That literally is a direct copy paste stats wise of a legendary ship that was released 18 months before it. Now, of course, there's more to the Praetor than just the ship itself. There is also the console and the starship trait. So the console is the spinal mount plasma torpedo, and there is some interest in this because it does have a charge up mechanic and it does look like it does a fair bit of damage. So for people that like to do torpedo DPS builds, this might be a console to go out and consider, but it's going to have to be thoroughly tested to see whether or not it's actually worth it. So the spinal mount plasma torpedo has passives on it for plus 24.2% increased plasma and kinetic damage. That is a category one damage bonus. And then plus 16.2% maximum hit points, which will also be a DPS boost as that is going to boost the amount of crit chance you're getting from the Tyler's duality reputation trait. Now the clicky on this does have a charge up mechanic that I haven't really uh, sat down and fully figured out yet. Um, Fluffle has a nice type up about it over on the builds discord from what they saw on the stream. I will be testing it once I actually get my hands on the ship itself on either holodeck or Tribble. I've already got T6 boxes lined up on both, so I'll definitely be grabbing this ship and trying it out shortly after its release. But it does have a charge up mechanic that looks like it'll charge up to boost the amount of damage the console does. And when you hit the, the clicky of the console, it fires out a massive plasma torpedo that will have its damage increased by how charged up it is. And that will deal a large amount of damage to the target and nearby foes. And it will also debuff the primary target, the one that you were clicking when you launched the console. And it will debuff them by, or with an all damage resistance debuff of 50, that can increase 0.5 per charge. And that's a debuff for 30 seconds. So there's potential for this console to do a ton of damage, but also to be a very potent debuff in some scenarios. So I'm curious to see how the performance of this console is. And like I said, I will be testing it and I might do some of that on a stream whenever this comes out. Now the starship trait from this does also look quite interesting from a min max point of view. This is not a trait that everyone needs to go run out and grab though. This looks to be a bit more niche and uh, something that you would use if you want to support or boost the, the damage of your teammates. So the trait is called test them. And when you decloak, you will have a foe that is marked with the they are weak. And when you damage the foe, it will mark them for 40 seconds. And if you kill them within that 40 seconds, you and your allies will receive a scaling damage buff that ranges from as low as 15% up to 30%. And you will receive a whole capacity buff that ranges from 10% up to 25%. And 
it will scale up based on what rank the enemy was that you killed. So if you get the mark on the target and you and your team kill them within that 40 second time frame, you will receive a buff that will scale up depending on what rank that enemy was. And if you want to try and get a higher boost from this, you can recloak and then decloak to mark another target and whatever target you hit with this and kill, whatever the largest buff is that you get will be the one that persist. This buff, which could be up to 30% cat one damage and up to 25% hull capacity will boost you and your team for the entire time you were on the map. So this has potential to be an extremely good support trait. Um, it's not something that I would run on a DPS character necessarily, but it does look like it would be very interesting for those that run high level coordinated runs, um, where you have people running dedicated support builds and things like that. You know, the, these types of traits where they provide a large boost to your team are not all that common. So this is a trait that I foresee getting a lot of attention from the min max scene and especially those that are actually going out and doing like record setting runs. I don't expect most people to go out and see much benefit from this trait, um, but I do expect it to become a meta pick for support builds or tank builds. And there's also the question of whether or not it stacks, you know, or, or are the high end runs only going to need one person with a straight in there, or is it going to be a situation where you would want the entire supporting team to be running the straight because it would stack? So. There are some questions, but it does look very interesting. It's an interesting concept. And while the ship itself was very unoriginal, being they copy pasted it and slapped this Romulan skin on it, the, the console and trait are actually fairly unique in the different aspects that they have. You know, the, the spinal mount plasma torpedo, we do have other consoles that fire out torpedoes. But like I said, this one has a charging mechanic, which could be a bit interesting. We just need to, to see how that fully functions. So overall, you know, it's a solid ship, but if all you care about is the ship itself, you know, I do have to say that you have to consider that legendary Vorcha, which is a really good ship. Um, and you can get that on account unlock through the 11th anniversary bundle. This thing, you know, it's going to be expensive. You're going to be looking at 50 to 60 bucks worth of EC for each one of these that you want to get. Um, if you're selling promo packs during the right time on the market, you know, it's going to be a fairly expensive ship and it's a single character unlock. So it's got the issues you see with any other lockbox ship. I do think it's interesting. I don't like how it looks visually, but the stats are on it are good because the ship that they decided to copy it from was a, thankfully a really good ship. The, uh, the bridge officer seating is solid. The the console on it looks extremely interesting to the torpedo play style. But if you don't care about torpedoes, you're not going to care about this console. If you don't care about supported runs, you're probably not going to care about the trait. So I, I think it's going to be an interesting ship. I look forward to, to getting my hands on it to try it out um, because I am still doing some of the supported runs. So... I want to try it out and see see how it stacks and things like that. So I'll be picking one up, but I don't think that this is a ship that I can recommend to most people, to be honest. It's not a bad ship. In fact, it's a very solid ship. It's just, once again, when we look at the legendary Vorcha, you know, it's almost the exact same thing. The difference is the Praetor gets one extra device and has a singularity core instead of a warp core, which means it also loses the uh, the cruiser command. So it's up to you. You know, it's your money. I'm going to be getting one. I've, I've got the T6 box ready to go. I've been saving one for, you know, in just in case something came out that I'd want to grab like this. So I'm going to pick one up. I'll do some testing with it. Um, I expect it to be probably around a billion EC on the exchange, maybe 1.2. The Farragut has been dropping under a billion at points recently. In fact, let me check that right now. Yeah, so the Farragut's dropped under a billion, and I expect we may even see this ship drop under a billion. So 
if you want to to pick one up with ec that would be the way to go especially if you can wait for the next promo drop i expect that you could probably get the ship for 50 to 60 bucks worth of promo packs so hopefully you found this video helpful it is a ship that i look forward to and i will be streaming with this whenever it comes out so that's going to be it for today. Hopefully you found this informative. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you when I can. Once again, thank you to all channel viewers for the continued support. More STO videos are coming out soon. Till then, see you guys next time.